Council on Economic Development and Health, Health and Human Services, uh, Parks, um, just to name three of three of those. Um, you know, really excited to get started working with uh, you know everyone here in Bridgeville. So um, you know, for the council, if you guys anything need anything from me on the county level, I'm you know happy happy to reach out. I know I've met uh, Mayor Copeland, Joe, Nick already, so I'm really excited to get started here working with you all and. Um, Signed off on it. The planning commission signed off on it. 
Not one question was asked about anything. So we're going to put a, a crematorium 22 feet away from Norris bedroom, where Collier Township says it should be 200 feet away from Norris bedroom, without asking one question. Okay? So now we get to the point of, you know, excuse me, I'm, I'm a petrified public speaker. I drive race cars, and this scares the shit out of me. So I'm sorry, but uh, I ask that you indulge. Okay. Now, in order to have a conditional use application considered, there must be a public notice presented. It requires a newspaper, it requires posting on the building, and it requires every property owner within 300 feet of that building must receive a notice of the intent of the community to put that conditional use business in that shit. Okay? That didn't happen. The only thing that was done was an article that they, there, there was a post to Ted posting. Nothing was on the building, nothing was put out in the mail. And that was confirmed at the May 13th meeting here. Okay? If I might interrupt real quick, I did also the talking about this time when you brought that issue up at that time. And right. That actually literature from your own lawyer, and I actually transparently informed you that if you were in the Green Party, you felt that there was a procedural defect in that decision, you had 30 days to uh, appeal that to the Common Pleas Court. Well, I understand. So you're telling me that in order to keep this from happening, I've got to go to the court. That's exactly what I right. oh, I understand. That's so I'm not sitting here to debate that. Here's what I'd like to say. Now, because the borough failed to provide public notice, <clears throat> the Supreme Court has ruled that, if I might read it from this, the court found that the public and na neighboring landowners have interests that are protected by the procedural safeguards given to the public and neighbors, notice of proposed zoning ordinance or conditional use permit, providing them the opportunity to participate in the consideration of such changes, which is important since the property rights of the public and the neighboring landowners may be affected by the proposed action. And then it goes on to say, according to the Supreme Court, found that the decision to grant a conditional use permit was void, and since no valid decision was there is no date. So they're saying, therefore, the dismissal of the neighboring landowner's complaint is untimely and over. So what they're saying is that technically, anybody can contest this conditional use approval at any point. But that's actually not what they're saying. And that's the same article we share with you. Oh, I understand that. So my point is, is so we, so you're saying, well, well, if you're agreed, then go to court. I'm saying, why did we go there? We have a pretty situation where we're putting a green for 200 feet away, or 20 feet away from a, a baby's window. And we didn't even ask a single question. And I just think that so I'm not going to debate this with you because I'm not going to, I'm not a lawyer, but I'm just going to tell you that it seems to me that there was an injustice done in the approval of this crematorium, which I believe is going to end up in a backlash against our community. And I just think that's not fair. So I ask, <laughs> back it out and do it right. And if you're not willing to do that, then I guess I'm not just saying, you know, we'll see what happens. Okay, the next thing that I like, would like to bring to your attention is at the June 10th meeting of the site plan, someone argued that, or, or challenged the position of the engineer that only 200, 702 square feet of a 2200 square foot building needed to be accounted for when calculating the minimum parking requirement. Now, I sit on the zone board, and when I was at Mrs. Snyder's zoning variance meeting, I had this conversation with the zoning board members. And they said, no, that's not how it works. You have to come for the whole building. And then it's up to the property owner to establish an argument as to why they should exclude any part of that building. And so now we have a difference of opinion between the engineer and the zoning board. And I asked for that consideration. I didn't even have one of the members from the zoning board to be here. I assume they're not. I call it. Okay, so now we have a situation where we have two different interpretations by two different governing bodies of bridges. And I'm saying, okay, so why am I now having to deal with the fact that, that there's going to be a parking problem bridge because it's a 2200 square foot building. It's not a 700 square foot building. And so my question, my position is, before we release the building permit, there should be a reassessment of that particular property to make sure that it is in fact compliant with the zoning requirements of bridge. And so just to arbitrarily let them go ahead and build this thing without doing that just seems to be an injustice. So I'm asking that 
Could that be presented to the zoning board for their consideration? And that's my request. Fine. If I might, I can advise council on further and more detail. Um, that actual the issue you raised was raised and vetted and determined by um, uh, Sean Lindgrove, uh, Sean Smith, uh, uh, Kevin's colleague at Randy Smith, who reviewed that matter and contacted him and satisfied that they met. I don't know whether there may or may not be an information gap between what you and the doctors discussed, but I don't know. So but again, the zoning board doesn't have jurisdiction in this matter, number one. Number two, it was reviewed by this board prior to and included as part of that decision. And again, months before, it was months before that that the conditional use uh, hearing happened. Uh, and then the site plan also was approved. One, as I also explained, has 30 days to appeal if they have a problem with that site plan consideration. We don't have the power to go back and undo it. And in my opinion, we don't have the original authority uh, basis that they comply with the approved site plan and the building permit requirements to proceed with the approved plan. I did double check with the building inspector to ensure that there were there wasn't anything on on the <coughs> included in the building permit that wasn't included in the site plan for say some interior renovations or renovations to the top floor or anything like that that would um, increase square footage and there's nothing uh, they're taking off the back they're taking off a little back addition um, they're not doing anything to the interior and they're putting on that you know that back but that there's, there's nothing you're correct and i'm not sorry if i may not recall there was an issue that had to do with the, the parking requirement for the occupancy of this area there was some suggestion that there was maybe another occupancy or occupancy potential we advised prior we were the applicant that if and when they ever did occupy that that comes would have to be taken into consideration but under the single occupancy plan as the way it was filed they were compliant with so under what certain like so which seven hundred and two square feet? I'm not going to debate chapter work on numbers in front of you okay. that I don't have at my disposal. Conceptually, what I said I believe is the case that the number requirements were met based on the open <laughs> space square footage. I see Kevin shaking his head. Yeah. Yes, our ordinance states uh, one space for two hundred fifty square feet for customer service. So where that furnace is going to be, am I correct, Kevin? That isn't included in the calculation because it's not going to be in. Well, that's, right. that's another issue that I'd like to address. But so if I walk into that building on any given day, <coughs> where do I, when do I determine that they're turning in violation of their stay? I mean, so I walk in on one day and upstairs. they have the second floor work done. If they go, if, if they're using the upstairs. For okay, so you're saying the anything is upstairs it is considered a violation. No, if they utilize the upstairs for retail or customer. What if they use it as an office? Or a different use? It's a different use. Then they have to. But it has to be reflected in the in the, in the site plan. You know, she uses that as her own office space, serving that own single occupancy business. Then it's included in it. How, how is this not? So now you've expanded 700 square feet to 1,400 square feet, right? You're saying she can use the second floor as an office, but she doesn't have to account for it. That's clearly not how it works. It's like every square foot has to be accounted for. Now, if she wants to quarantine that space, then I would argue, okay, that's an acceptable way to do that. Because then we know if she tears a wall down, then she's now expanding beyond the accepted use of the site. Mm -hmm. The second question I have is, did she put the incinerator in the garage? You'd have to check with the building inspector. He reviewed everything in, in the, all, all in compliance, firewalls. Yeah, I understand that. But there's an incinerator in the, in the garage. That's what they're going to do because that's why they built the garage. If they put an incinerator in the garage, they now expanded the use of that space to include a process. An incinerator is a piece of equipment that processes bio waste into something else. It's not retail sales or customer service. It is an incinerator. And so therefore, if they've expanded the use of that property to include an incineration process, that needs to be reflected in site plan. So they are now violating the, only, the square footage that they investigate. And that needs to be considered on the site plan. And I believe it would have to be as a variance. The site plan showed the parking and they gave uh, what their uses were mm -hmm. based on the ordinance mm -hmm. and what they submitted in compliance with the ordinance. Mm -hmm. Everything else deals with building permit mm -hmm. and how they break up the space. If they violate 
violate uh, the space and what they're calling each square foot within the building permit. Uh, building inspector will have to just check that right. to make sure that they meet those standards. So the information that the borough receives and they review is they meet part of the requirements. And the and the building inspector does do a final walkthrough. They do inspections for a while, but he's the one that issues the occupancy on the <coughs> So he will be the one that issues it after he sees the final part. Yeah, but that's not the argument here. The argument is if they put pizza oven in the garage, they're going to have to account for the fact that they now have to start giving pizzas too. It's not just customer service and we got failed. They're doing something else there that they didn't disclose at the time of the site plan. And that needs to be taken into consideration. It would be unfair to allow them just arbitrarily expand the use of the building for something other than. Does that make sense? I mean, that's why I'm on it. It sounds like you're making some assumptions of what you think they're going to do. Well, they're going to put an incinerator in the garage. I mean, that's not an assumption. That's the only way you can do it. Yeah. But what they've, what they've asked to do and permitted to do is, has been approved. I mean, so. I understand. Yeah. But if they put an incinerator in the garage, that is not what they asked for, and that's, that's not what they were approved. Okay, so do we know if they put an incinerator in the garage? Well, I don't know what it's called as far as you know the device that it's they bring to the crematorium, but uh, I do believe that's going to go into right. that area. Yeah. Does that change the the, the permit at all? No, no, no. Okay. Well, in fact, this was actually reviewed in June, covered by them. I'm looking at my notes. That exam and, and actually the potentiality of a second floor occupancy was raised. It was not included in the plan, and uh, in fact, we, Sean and I thought that it would either have to be included in the plan if contemplated or we would give a disclaimer and they were advised accordingly. With regard to the, the, the facility is actually a crematorium where that operation is carried out, okay? That's by definition what the nature of her business was. It is people to be. People were very repetitive to be cremated in that site. By definition, it wouldn't be a contraption to do yeah, that. That's, that's to do that. They're not out there. Can I, ask, can I finish and I'll yeah. answer that question? I'm trying to answer that very question. The parking requirement for that kind of business is based on the square footage of the public space. So that if you, if by your pizza analogy, if you had to have so many parking spaces for the public part of your pizza shop, but you were making the pizzas down in the basement, the fact that you put your pizza oven in the basement, in fact, does not kick in parking requirements. Additional to what that because it's not an expansion, it. it's, it's part of the operation. It's so, a machine, so, 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 Mr. McDermott, if I may ask one more point because I don't want to waste your time. Now that the building permit has been processed, I have, I have 30 days to challenge the building permit, is that right? You do. Okay. That's not the deal with the zoning board, you can deal with the permit. Okay. John, I'd like to answer one question. Yeah. When they came before planning commission, I was a member of the planning commission, if you recall yeah. that. No, I wasn't there. I, I didn't find out about yeah, this. I can test the uh, crematory uh, mechanical, right. if you will, which the following month, and that's a record, they have a, a, a county paper and everything that was okay to do that. So at that time, uh, I and the rest of the planning commission have no choice to, to uh, agree with that. Uh, as far as the, the all these other things with the engineer and everything also came be before us. At that time, we in plan information because it was everything in, in the regulation. Otherwise, we were actually, I think we did postpone some contingency. I don't recall exactly. And then the following month, it took about three or four months that this got through. It, it, it was quite a few contingency on it. Okay. Now, go back on the primary story. We have one of Washington Avenue. For years and years, if you recall, I don't know if you knew the original of them, Blair Pharmacy was there. And they put one over there, which the building is side by side, and maybe they don't, they don't even have a, I was not in, I was in council there, but I was not involved with any other uh, uh, committee, such as the planning commission there. And there seems to be no complaint at all for years and years uh, over there. I, 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 I just want, I don't know if you knew we have one on which I, I know, and I, and I think that there probably be people who object to the stuff, but that's Oops. not neither here nor there. I've never had it. Really? Well, I, just people say, yeah, you don't tell when they're doing it. It's, but 
nobody made a big deal out of it. Okay. Just we've never. Well, had I think there is a smell. You will hear it from us. Um, and also, if they continue to use my parking lot for turning around, you will hear it from us. So, uh, this is getting, it's going to get very much of a And I'm hoping that we can find a way to do this correctly so that we don't have this turning into a, to a very dangerous situation. So, these parking requirements are contrary to the way they should be done. And I'm convinced of that. You're not going to as I sit on the zoning board, I, we deliberately for two and a half hours because Tom's dance studio had 60 parking spaces and the zoning board said they needed another 20. For two and a half hours, we deliberated. On this sort of thing, they didn't even give it 20 minutes. It's just ridiculous. So, I, look, I know that I'm not going to convince you and you turn and kind of have the, the floor here. And you're welcome to do whatever you want. I'm just telling you, we are now all aware of the fact that there is no public notice for this. Our rights to have a conversation about this were taken away, and nobody seems to care. The parking requirements have been, I mean, it's just a muddled mess. I don't know how to manage that, but that's fine. I will deal with it as best I can. But I have to tell you that, you know, I'm very bitter about this. I, I, for 30 years, I've occupied the place in Brickville and never said a word. Never saw me once. This thing has been horribly and I'm just very bitter about it. I have to be honest, I'm very bitter. And so you're welcome to do what you want, and I will continue to fight the battles that have been my hands. But thank you. I appreciate it, and I'm sorry that I'm such a horrible person. Thanks, sir. Thanks for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. on the tree project since um, we've been working on the tree pit first. Um, first of all, I'd like to say thank you to Lori for um, working with Tree Pittsburgh and um, it did January Lori and Kinsey um, Miller from Tree Pittsburgh Wa Washington Avenue to check the planting um, pits as well as seeing um, pit sizes were appropriate for the trees that we'd like to plant in addition to um, checking to see if there were any utility conflicts that we have concerns about. Um, so what my understanding, we had originally um, the potential to plant 28 trees. And with, uh, after the walkthrough, there are 20 available spots for planting um, that would be viable. Uh, three of those spots are in uh, parking authority lots uh, on Washington Avenue. And I do want to see if you can see now. The area indicated in purple, um, there is room to plant three trees, which would bring the total to 20 for, from Pigman to Bower Hill, including three of the spots indicated in purple. So, um, at Lori's request, I emailed the parking authority. Um, didn't hear back from them for a while. It was over two weeks. So I went ahead and called and spoke directly with Mike Connor, explained what we were doing, and um, that we were looking to see if we could potentially plant three trees in that spot. He is um, checking with uh, parking authority and also really they have a private landscaping business that takes care of their lot. So just making sure that that was okay. So um, if we do get permission from them, then that will bring the total tree count to 20. Um, he did, at the time of the conversation, give us permission um, during planting to use uh, the lot there for staging to put mulch and to have the registration tables, as well as tables for um, the volunteers that are working with food and helping out the, the people that are there for the uh, that day. Um, on the 29th of January, Tree Pittsburgh came back and did a testing to test the soil quality. Uh, they said the soil quality is, is very good. Um, however, they are going to um, add something called biochar, which is the biochar, rather, um, is to amend the soils to make sure that the trees have the best possible chance of 
thriving in the, in the new planting space. Um, right now, uh, I wanted to just run this by you. Uh, April 4th is the date that they're looking for to do the planting if you guys decide that you're okay with moving forward with this project. Um, I haven't put anything out publicly yet. Um, I just wanted to make sure before we start trying to get volunteers. I have a list probably of more people than I need, but I wanted to make sure that April 4th we're designed for, for you. Um, you don't have to be in attendance, but just making sure that, that that's okay. Um, they've tentatively scheduled us because their planting days are working up pretty quickly. Um, so the original planting was for 28. We only are planting potentially 20 trees. I asked about uh, the Plan B sites um, for additional planting. Their recommendation is they would like to do a second project or a second planting to keep it simple to um, do the first planting and then come back to the borough and see where other trees are needed, um, potentially get some additional funding from them so we could you know, continue doing this, but it could be a park, different types of trees, you know, whatever. So they're open to that um, as well. Um, just to recap, Tree Pittsburgh is going to provide a map of the planting site so we know specifically where each tree will be located. Um, it's my plan to go to each of the businesses that are going to have a tree in front of them and basically talk to the business owners and explain the project so it's not planting day and they walk out and see the, their own tree site in front of their property. Um, so we'll have a map of the planting sites. I believe that uh, Kinsey is going to reach out to you if she has not already about a PA1 call and any additional questions or concerns yeah. that you have. Okay, I, I really do appreciate you working with, with her um, on that project. Um, so they will provide the trees, the stakes, all of the planting tools for the day of the planting. Uh, they will provide four staff members to help with the planting and do the planting demonstration that morning. Um, they will provide high visibility uh, vests and gloves. And then what we will provide, when I say we, my husband and I, <laughs> we'll provide um, so three yards of undyed mulch. Um, and what we can do is either talk to Public Works, we can provide the funding if they want, you want us to use the exact same mulch. Um, we can do that, or we can privately purchase um, with the funding that we have. But just what you know, we can cross that bridge if we do it closer. Um, we'll provide a registration table and tent, coffee, breakfast, and lunch for all of the volunteers, which is a requirement that Tree Pittsburgh has that we do for the planting event. Um, we will also purchase the Arbor Ties. Uh, we're looking into having five gallon buckets donated, one for each of the trees, so that it's the um, best type of watering for the trees. What you do is you fill a five gallon bucket and the bucket has holes in it. If you put a hose that's just running, the water will run into the street. So what you do is you fill the bucket and you set it next to the tree and it slowly seeps into the tree and it absorbs the water and sewer system. So we're getting those uh, hopefully donated. Um, we need 20 to 25 volunteers. As I mentioned, we have a Facebook uh, event that we're waiting to go live until we decide what date is appropriate. And we're hiring a photographer to take photos of the day of planting and so we can get some uh, good PR for, for Bridgeville. So, um, and one final thing, there is another Tree Tenders course that Tree Pittsburgh is um, holding, which will be on Saturday, February 22nd in Lawrenceville from 9 to 4. Mike and I attended the last one. Um, there was probably 50 people, 50 oh. people there from all over uh, Pittsburgh. Uh, people that are members of the Shade Tree Commission, people that are just concerned citizens, uh, but it's very informational. Uh, they do provide lunch for you, um, and it's a $40 class from 9 to 4. TreePittsburgh.org slash events, and you can find out what the details are. Anybody have any questions? Just, just two questions for me. Uh, first of all, Lori, I, 
I know we had some, um, there was some concern about the sites. Are, are we comfortable with the sites as they've been defined with the uh, group? Um, as far as, the well, one thing that I would say would be, um, I think we should send letters to the business owners, letting them know what's proposed. Probably because I've had a few business owners that have said that they didn't want us to block their view. When we were talking about them way Absolutely. back, so as far as that goes, and just also so that council knows that these trees aren't going to be planted with any type of tree lawn. So, um, would you like that letter to come from council, or would you like that to come directly from us, or um, from the board, just giving them information that there's a potential for a grant for three trees, and just getting you know their input as far as um, you know how they would feel about the trees. It probably would be helpful if I talked to Kinsey. And I saw, you know, where the trees were going to be. So She's I She's providing a map. Yeah. So I will send that to you and I'll do um, if you want to build it, but you have how would you know I have and um, as I mentioned I'm happy to go to the businesses in person and explain and answer any questions that they may have um, about the planning. And just listening to her when she presented, I'm, I get the impression they're considerate of location of the businesses signage and things like that. Absolutely. Yeah. She walked with me. There were different trees proposed in different areas um, as to how the area was <coughs> set up. You know, there were smaller trees in front of businesses where, um, you know, uh, for larger trees just to want to keep them visible to the site. So I think it was two different types of trees. Yeah. And if, you're, if it's near like a major intersection, it's not going to be a tree that's going to like go right. and then they're going to. Kind of this way. Way. It'll be more vertical and vertical instead of um, you know, you did talk about how um, the trees will enhance the, you know, a shade or, and the importance of pruning early on and throughout the, you know, the early life of the tree. Is that something that Tree Pittsburgh still does? You don't prune the tree until after two years. Okay. So the only maintenance that would be required would be the mulching initially <coughs> um, and then watering putting them on a watering schedule. So we would take care of monitoring that. I could work with Lori to let her know like what who from our volunteers is coming and when they're doing it. Also seeing what businesses are interested. I'd like as many that are interested to participate in the planting if because then they're more invested in taking care of the tree and it's feeling more of a sense of community. Um, not saying that Tree in front of your business, you gotta water it later. You know that's not what this is about. It's um, about everybody coming together to make their feel better. So, um, well, I was just referring to. She talked about so the people that are worried about the visibility of their sign and their, you know, what they see when they look out. The pruning over time is what she talked about. They could prune it so it wouldn't impede your view or you know the signage of your building. Well. So the, the pruning is for, you know, really you're pruning anything that's dead on the tree, anything, you know, you want to plant the right tree so that you're not having a situation where you plant the tree that's going to get really big and it's power line, and you have to top, lock the top of the tree up. I understand that. I just want to know, do they yeah. do the pruning? Or so so my yeah. cousin, to the tree tender course, we, or we know how to do that. Also, they have mulching parties, so you can reach out to Tree Pittsburgh, and they will say your community needs to have an area taken care of. That room full of 50 people that were at the Tree Tenders course were very excited and wanted to reach out to other neighborhoods and other communities and say, hey, if you're going to go and uh, trim your trees, we'd love to come and help you, and then you'll come and help us with ours, and, you know, so it's People are very excited about it. It's not just, yeah, I don't, there's not a lot of pruning though to answer your question about the first two. We don't do that the first two years. But yeah, that would be something that would, would take place in the bigger person. I'm also the trees court. I was no, no, no. I'm curious how, how yeah. that process works. Do they come and do the pruning? Or so now I know that you and the So we can do the pruning. Um, and it's also something um, that would be great if anybody from Public Works that's I would think that that would be something fantastic because now that I've been to this class, Mike and I 
Yeah. Just to let me know. I'll get the public court to do the best we can. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. They'll need their training. Of course. Yeah. We have a couple of One anyway, I know. <laughs> um, probably just, I would say, um, you want to do it April 4th. That's the proposed date. What I would, I don't think we're going to need to be in a rush to get on to it. You know what, I think so that the borough doesn't feel like something's out on social media before any business owners have been notified. I don't want to do that because I don't want to make anybody feel like they have not been given fair warning or information or feeling left out type of thing. How about they forward the, the planting map to both of you and take a look and see what you think. You can talk to Kinsey at any point. She's, you know, and then we can work letters. Um, and I think, and I'm happy yeah. to go around, like I said, that was one of the things that I, I mm -hmm. felt was very important to do, is to talk to the business owner. Um, so, but I, I think that would be better. And then you guys can make well, a plus you can decision. Sell the kind of tree that you want to be able to come from. Yeah, just give them information <coughs> and, you know, answer questions. And, you know, that way, like I said, we're not walking around on Sam and saying, what is this? You know, why don't we know about it? So, um, I'm happy to hold off on making it public, if you will, because I do think I have enough volunteers already. Um, but I'll get you that information, okay. and, and any questions you have in the meantime, please let me know. And it's also not by the staff now, it's just this point. Um, so are you uh, asking them, do you want a tree here? Well, what, what I think um, what the verbiage should probably be is we have the opportunity to, you know, have tree plantings that, you know, we're going to have, you know, tree tenders and, you know, and explain and if I, we have the map, this is the type of tree that would be planted and it's going to be here and, you know, we want to get your input before we move forward. Sure. And just, you know, see, you know, see what the response is. Um, and if there's somebody that's on the fence or whatever, you know, maybe, you know, I, I can forward their information to you and to talk to them. And then, um, but because the trees are being planted in front of it's not, we're not planting a tree in front of someone's business in land that they own. It's owned by the borough. So you don't really need their permission to do so. So I'm it's kind of a slippery slope. It's, it's you're opening it up to do you want it there? Yeah. So that business owner leaves in six months and then you don't have you lose this opportunity to have yeah. trees where you put them. So the only thing that I'm concerned with is our ordinance states that sidewalks and curbs are the responsibility of property owners. And when we did that project up there, we more or less said okay. You know, it was a, a condition that was caused by something that happened 29 years before, and here it is. But you're going to be responsible from here on in. So even though, um, you know, we did that project and we planted bushes, ultimately if the sidewalks are destroyed or, you know, something happens or uh, whatever, the property owners are responsible to replace them, not the borough. And that's within the whole world. So that, that's... But I believe if we were to install trees, it would be our duty to make sure that the trees don't grow and that they remain in there. It, it this is with the sidewalks, because the sidewalk would be well taken and it's going to be... That's what happened last year. Yeah. That's what happened if I understand correctly, when the, uh, uh, the young lady was with you from the... Uh, she said that, and I could, I remember very well, that the roots of these trees, they not like the previous trees that we had. I recall it very well. At a certain point, they stopped. And like I say, you don't want to go any further. I mean, hey, I recall that conversation. So, correct. We, we should have no problem. <coughs> and we're not asking them to take care of the trees. We're just saying, this is where we would like to plant trees. It is not your responsibility to take care of these trees. It's like Terry Garrett or something to take care of. Mm -hmm. it, you know, we are providing the watering schedule. 
people and, and all of these things. So um, I would just be concerned about the voters of so asking yeah. for too much permission from somebody mm -hmm. that doesn't own the property and isn't expected to care for those trees. So that would be my only concern. Um, but I'll provide you with the, the information and any questions that you have. Um, if I can see the letter before it goes out. Thank you. Nice work. One Thank last you. thing. One last thing. Uh, we're at the AOL meeting. This is our live call before the meeting. Okay. Yeah, we're going to have to do it. I did it with me right now. Oh, my God. Did you think I was at it? No, we know you. That's the problem with the live meeting.
just the stack of traffic on the miles of roads in Bridgeville. Again, so the main roads in Bridgeville, Washington Plain, is in the western, near the western edge of the community, and the wind carries everything with our people. And what the point I'm trying to make is the, uh, the effect on the health of these people uh, was indicated in the death certificates that I looked over for 25 years as uh, the only cure on the bridge When I tried to, uh, the, these conditions definitely shortened the lifespan of the people, and there was a considerable number of people who caught these causes of death were pulmonary problems and cancer. And uh, uh, finally, uh, the uh, the, uh, the, the rest of the data that I gave you. I'd like you guys, I, I, I emphasized a few, several times, and I don't know if you fully understood me, that trying to get millions of dollars for projects that are only good for Bridgeville is not going to be looked at as favorably from the federal, state, and county funding people in contrast to your developing, for example, a traffic congestion, a uh, solution to the traffic congestion problem, like this one, I think I gave you guys a plan. That's where you extend Shady Avenue 220 yards, and you add another lane on Washington, you add two lanes on Washington Pike from the Barger Road intersection to the uh, Preston Road intersection. And in terms of developing another business district in the tax revenues that we need, by doing what the young lady suggested, who was our flood solution woman, that would be move the traffic onto Baldwin Street. And what I'm suggesting is uh, that that's a great idea. By making Baldwin from the uh, bar from the bar to road Irwin Street intersection, to make a ramp down the ramp. Baldwin Street's only eight feet below and that intersection. By the way, it's a very it's not much at all. Making the Baldwin Street two lanes going east, making Bar Hill Road on the Rockland intersection, two lanes going west, and the, uh, the people on the Cook School Road, the Rockland Road, and Bar Hill Road, and Scott Township, and other things there, I'm sure are supported. I think if you take an aggressive move like this, a three community solution like this, I think you'll get, I'm sure you'll get support from all three communities. And finally, excuse me, in terms of, oh, by the way, I mentioned, I, I showed you these guys a couple of times, we discussed this with this in the planning commission last month. Uh, this, this has always been the excuse that PennDOT and everybody else has used as why they couldn't why add two more lanes to Washington Avenue between the Barger Road intersection and the Preston Road intersection. That's the 100-year-old steel beam bridge, railroad bridge over the top of uh, Washington Avenue. Uh, the plan, this plan that I have, I showed to a Pennsylvania engineer, he said it was a better idea than they had, because it drops the cost to one-third of what a uh, different type of bridge would be. And the other, finally, if you well, to, could I interrupt you for a second? Sir, you had said the South Bay and Collier, I'm assuming, other communities. Right. would be in favor, how would they assist something in Bridgeville? You say I, they, I would pay, they would help pay for it? I have no idea. Matter of fact, I, I would say Well, suggest. you're saying the ones that they would. So I'm just trying no, to understand no, no, what no, you no, mean. No, I said they would. I would say they would politically support it. I'll tell you what the problem is. Then. <laughs> Excuse me. Stop being so modest and conservative in what you ask the federal, state, and county funding agencies for. In other words, if you develop a plan like this, and in the list that I gave you, and I don't know if you ever got it, I itemized every feature on that plan to build something like this and other improvements in the community. Get the damn uh, cost estimates so we can put them together and approach uh, these agencies in the correct way. Can I ask you a few more questions? Sure, I can. So uh, the extension is shady. You had said that wouldn't affect any buildings. Correct me if I'm wrong, it would knock down part of the uh, old Pelosi uh, historical building, correct? No, I never said it wouldn't affect any okay. buildings. Okay. So, so let me correct you. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me finish my question. 
said it wouldn't affect any phone. Okay. Well, there you go. You correct on that too. Good. So what happens to Moore Street, those three or four homes that are on that street? To where? Moore Street. There are homes <coughs> on that street that would be probably uh, affected by those. I don't know. What, you mean, what street is that? Is that correct? Where are your homes, Captain? Properties. There's a street, Moore Street, that has four or five homes. Oh, Moore. Street, uh, Moore. That would be the extension of Shady Avenue. Correct. <coughs> no, so no, those no. houses would be affected, wouldn't they? Only one of them. Well, you said there would be no residential homes that would be affected. Well, I wasn't exactly. There will okay. be a home. They'll pay with, they'll pay with you and some of the other house in the middle of the doing stuff. Well, I'm just, I'm just well, well, trying to understand what just, you're saying. I don't ask any questions. Yeah, but this is the same theory that you proposed twice before the meeting. Well, let, let me finish, William. No, let me finish. You've gone over this about 30 times, so I'm just asking questions. To make sure that I understand what you're proposing, I'm trying to understand what would happen to the War Street, what would happen to the Clusey building, what would happen to the, is there enough of a radius for a truck to go through your one-way uh, turn, or will we yeah, have to yeah, change yeah, yeah, the 85-foot radius is a more than adequate. Okay, <laughs> and, and I, that was a question. I want to answer one of your questions, but for the benefit of the listener. The, uh, to extend Shady Avenue so it could become one of the two, three lane wide main streets of Roosevelt, you have to cut off about 50 feet of the Calusi building, which is a 100 year old warehouse, which you could care to them, they could care less about. Well, I would disagree with Mr. Colino's uh, thoughts on does he use that in storage? Well, I'd like to. Well, part of his business? Maybe he does, but the owner of the building, yeah. the, the owner of the building, and I discussed it. He said they just only on it to it for personal family reasons. Excuse me, I want, this is the point I want to get to. If you go through important capital projects that the people in Brookville needed that came uh, to have an expanded business district, if you go back to the Bridgeville officials opposing that, you guys, know, some of you guys have opposed it. Because you didn't want to offend the people and the families whose property you were taking, even though there we they would be. It's called eminent domain. If you aren't enthusiastic about buying essential property for the other five thousand people in town, whether you are three or four friends of yours, you're making a mistake. That's your response. Okay. One more thing I want to mention in the okay. sitting down. Uh, roads, the bridge. This is the part of it. And uh, uh, some more, uh, I don't see more street. Oh, yeah, more street is the one here. I'm um, calling that. Sorry. Excuse me. This is the three lane Shady Avenue. This is the 220 yard extension. This is the three lane Washington Avenue. This would be a better business district in terms of uh, consumer motorists driving when they have not left in. Because Mount Bethan doesn't have a parallel road, but well, they have the Cannonsburg. Because I mean, Cannonsburg doesn't have a parallel road like this. The other thing is, Shady Avenue is half a block away from Washington Avenue, which typically these streets, uh, like in Coriopolis, for example, they're a full block away. The Bridgeville would have two major loop rounds, very convenient for the consumer motors. <coughs> Joe, in terms of. Excuse me. Hey, Bubba's. Okay, well, I just want to point out this is this is the extension Joe was talking about. The uh, talk of this person, he just put a hundred thousand dollars in that home, and uh, I told him to hold on to it because some they kind of thought I'd buy it from him. But like the point is, when we have problems, for example, someone, a councilman mentioned uh, about uh, the uh, oh this parking lot next to the Commonwealth. Uh, bank. Uh, the Diarco uh, building owners just bought for $170,000. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, someone mentioned that they talked to the owner of the adjacent property, the Dreon family. They don't want to sell the property. It doesn't matter if they don't want to sell the property. Your job is to look out for the 5,000 people in the town, especially when the property owner is going to get 15% more than the property's worth. And in that instance, it's going to double the income in the Dreon building where there's several vacancies. Okay, I'm completed. Thanks for your Thanks. Thanks. Mr. Petrus.
So, uh, yes, uh, I only have three. Three issues to resolve this problem. That's okay, I can say it here. Number one is dogs. It seems like Bridgeville is becoming a dog uh, park, especially in my street anyway. Uh, and I would like to know what I can do about it to stop them. And number two, uh, we have a garbage problem. Seems to me that the, the company don't really care who they hire because I find garbage in my yard after they come to me. Especially the recycling. What church? I it's on my street to send you to Eisen. So I picked up about 15, 20 bottles. I did That's call you right away on that. Yes, you did. You already did pick them up. Right, and I did send them an email and let them know that there was garbage on the road so, and in the yard and please help them pick it up. In terms of the garbage, I can tell you that uh, we have had concerns as well uh, for, for years. And we have met with the garbage company beginning this past month, and we will meet with them monthly to discuss the performance and evaluate uh, whether we're going to continue with that. One of the things that was <coughs> encouraging was from November into January, December, January, the complaints that we received went from 70 some in November down to 13 or something in, in January. Um, and, and so they're responding anyway. Um, I would encourage you that if you do continue to have problems, call, call down here and we're documenting every complaint that we get. And during our monthly meetings, that is part of the performance evaluation that I'm considering. So, appreciate it. Remember, it was a different New York. So, you know what I mean. Number three, the streets are in bad shape. Especially in the neighborhood. The main streets are okay. But the uh, in the neighborhood streets are becoming, I mean, there's a lot of patches that I see as being done. And I know this is a bad time to do it here. So I, I saw on the, uh, on the public works or the, the uh, engineer's report that next month we're meeting to discuss our road, road pavement program. Is that correct? We did that already. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I will announce that on my report. Okay. Sure. Oh, and Thank one you. more just came to mind Presley Road up on top. We need a four way stop sign. Okay. Because uh, people uh, by night, it's 35 miles an hour. I think we should bring it down to 25. Probably even lower than that. Yes, it is a safe road, I believe. Yeah. 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 Any, anything done like that would require the uh, state to do. I mean, people go straight from uh, to that uh, shortcut thing. I call it a shortcut. I don't know what it is. Maybe. I think it was 40, 50 miles an hour. Uh, something has to be done. So I know we placed a bunch of signage up there, right? Yes. Yeah, we put one of the pool on the bus and on the uh, road. Do we put well, the, the, pull, the pull stop sign would be, I think I mentioned. Uh, well, it's either that or we put a, a traffic light. How's that? Yeah, well, that's another yeah. so That's not that. Well, sure it's easier. What's the cost of quarter of a million? Pardon me? What's the, what's the traffic light cost of a million? Oh, quarter of a million or something? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just remember something. On the dog park. I think you had a. Uh, is the media here? No. Yeah, the newspaper. Right. Bridgeville right. News. New York Times. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think what they need to do on the Bridgeville News is put in bold letters. So they uh, do not. Take any, do not take your dog on other people's property. <coughs> I, I, there's a lot of dog, uh, dog uh, lovers. I'm not one of them. <laughs> uh, I was attacked, not attacked, but I was confronted with five dogs. So I can feel that's great. 
You can put a sign on your property, you don't allow it. Well, the penalty has to be up to $1,000. That's an order they're going to waste. Now, they say, oh, but they carry it back, big deal. If nobody's around, they go like this. Mm. <laughs> Just walk away. I think there should be some steps that you can really take care of it, you know? January 6th, 2020, reorganization of the regular meeting minutes as submitted. So moved. Second. Bruce, you and Neil. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion to pass. Get a motion to approve the February 2020 bill list. I'll move. Second. Joe Reducey and BJ, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Get a motion to approve the February 14th, 21st, 28th, and March 6th, 2020 payroll. Second. Nino. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Need a motion to adopt resolution number 2020-01 authorizing the President of the Council to sign the First Amendment to, contribute to contribution agreement number 119-556A between the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Department of Transportation and Bridgeville Borough for the Department's roadway and bridge widening improvements on State Route 50 which is Washington Avenue and State Route 3034, which is Chartier Street Project. Under remarks, no monetary contributions will be provided by the borough of Bridgeville for construction of the wall. And upon completion, the borough will assume ownership and all maintenance responsibilities. Yes, I will. Second. You know, Joe, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Need a motion to approve the request from Select Contracting LLC for partial payment number four and final in the amount of $16,488 for the borough share of CD 45 7.2 the Walk and Run Park EDA restroom renovation project to be made by the Char West Council of Governments. <coughs> Under remarks, the check was cut out from the 2019 budget in the amount of $12,446 and the balance of $4,042 will be issued out of the 2020 budget. Okay. All in favor? Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Is this for the, uh, yeah. for the valves that were done on my street as well? Yeah, from the Oh, thank okay. you. So that one, I, I want to state for the simple reason that I was one of the, you know, the people who they did the work. Uh, I shall, I mean, I, okay. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? <laughs> Motion passed. Need a motion to approve the request for remittal of partial payments number two, contract number 19-S1, backwater valve contract phase two, to Osiris Enterprise Incorporated, the amount of $75,636.15 for work completed to date. Under remarks, the estimate has been reviewed and approved by engineer Brett. Now that's the one I do like to have stated, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I have stated for that simple reason. I, I was at one of the property owners that this was the job. So I, I have stated for that. Do you want to think? Yes. I understand. I'm the recipient of that. Okay, so Nick and Neil are abstain. Uh, all in favor? Second. No, I don't need to say. All in favor. Thank you, Joe. Should I take any kind of call on this? All in favor. Uh, opposed? Motion passed. I need a motion to accept and pay any commission due to the January 2020 real estate tax collections report. I'll move. Second. Second. Joe and BJ, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. A motion to accept the December 2019 Treasurer's report. I'll move. Joe? Second. And Bruce, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. I need a motion to accept the 
December 2019 and January 2020 police reports. So moved. Second. Bruce and Joe Colossum, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. We need a motion to accept the February 2020 zoning report. That's your move. You know. Second. And Bruce can introduce you second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Okay, on the committee reports. Uh, administration. Uh, thanks, Bill. So the committee, as well as um, Lori, borough manager, is focused currently on identifying efficiency opportunities to enhance and improve the business um, operations in the office. And in doing so, um, we have all elected to invest in the continuing ed education for the council members as well as the staff to attend the Allegheny League of Municipalities Spring Conference called ALOM. Just for your knowledge, um, their mission is to foster local government in Allegheny County in southwestern Pennsylvania by educating the elected officials, delivering essential resources, and advocating for sound policy and legislation. So we really think um, they're helping the public circuit and our service help um, make better choices um, and help the communities to be better. And on that note, we're continually um, seeking professional development opportunities for our administrative staff, Cheryl and Cheryl Valentino. Um, and there are some webinars that are available. Um, there's a series of them that they're interested in, the role of the uh, municipal secretary and administrator in a couple of topics such as um, requirements, best practices for meetings, minutes, public notices, ordinances, record management, state reporting, sunshine act, and open access. Um, and lastly, we're exploring ideas, and the committee met with Lori about um, ideas and options to upgrade the safety of the municipal staff within the borough um, building itself. So um, she states that in the year break, Lennon Smith has worked on projects like this before. Um, and we're familiar with it, so we're looking at, you know, other ways for, for the staff to be. Safety. I know, speaking of safety, safety. right? So um, that's what I have for this one. Thank you very much. Thank you. Because um, apparently we have a public safety issue right now. <laughs> Let's move on to uh, the finance. We no real expenses uh, that are out of the ordinary for, for January, other than we had uh, a certain building that was knocked down that was rather close to this building. Uh, but that was in 2019 budget, and we've already taken care of uh, those checks. It's just a matter of <laughs> so those those are all taken care of. Um, we uh, obviously are uh, starting the 2020 uh, in regards to taxes. We have collected a little bit uh, again in January. Um, or if we could uh, possibly get an updated list on what we're to do from 2019 still. Uh, we're in the process of scheduling a. Uh, the committee meeting in the near future, that would be one of the things that we wanted to talk about, as well as uh, the audit that's coming up in the near future as well. So, um, I think that's about it. Serious. Thanks, Joe. Uh, Parks and Recreation. Yeah. Uh, we've been talking for several months about work done with McLaughlin and uh, talking about charters. Everything sort of came to a head today. Lori's been in conversation with the engineers. They got the plans going for McLaughlin Park and sudden bid the spring. So we're going to have a meeting on that very directly, very quickly. Also, Chartier's Park, we are going to apply for a grant for the uh, bank stabilization down there. And they did some parking lot work and hopefully some road work down there. And that particular grant's due April 22nd. So the next couple of weeks, we're going to have a meeting with the Parks Committee and Lori and the engineer when they get all their information together. And we shall go ahead and have that. Hopefully, 
really going to get some good news to get things going down in the department. That's all I have. <coughs> Thanks, John. Uh, Public Works, Nina. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As you notice, we have a little bit of snow a couple of days ago, and uh, I brought the court uh, was on the ball to excuse the term, but they were there. And uh, my cousin, Mr. Charlie, called me, my street is not clean. I said, you don't leave on a hill. We do the four hill first. We have to suffer on the, on the, on the smoother on the level part. But they, they take care of it well. I go back on a meeting with the engineer. I only covered the, the public work. There were other conversations. Uh, we have a meeting on the road program in January. It was the engineer. All four engineers. I had to get a bill on that one. And every one of them had a different role in their company. There was one of the most uh, good meeting that I ever had with an engineer firm. Uh, we are remembering the will on the road. We did have an inventory years and years ago, and the board manager was so kind to bring that up again. And, and we invented the will. I said, so we're gonna, they're going to take some inventory away or the bed run down. And I hope that we can go back on our, whenever that road's coming, we will do it. They'll take a while. So when I first got in council, I say, we're gonna, I started that, and said, it's gonna be 20 year program. <coughs> Actually, I said 15. But in 20 years, every single road in Bridgeville was done. And we'll we do it as, as the time comes. We try to get back on that. It's not gonna be for a while, because for a while, they, they let that go, no fault of uh, the administration or the public work. And just the way the water and the flood, is, those things always push you back on a lot of things. Nothing we can do about it. So we, I was very happy with the meeting. And uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Uh, public safety, please. I don't have any Mayor? Thank you. <clears throat> the last Thursday I had the opportunity to speak to the Coast Guard station here. And Chief King accompanied me and because of Black History Month they asked me to speak. And it was odd to me, of course, that there are no active Coast Guardmen right now that are African American. Also, I'm speaking to a room full of twenty seven men. The one woman was on leave, so that was, was quite interesting to have them sitting there looking at me like they were really into what I was saying. That was quite an interesting experience. The fire department has their fish five coming up. February 28th is the first one, March 27th, April 10th at 4 o'clock p.m. And also, uh, Assistant Fire Chief Mike Meglin and his wife welcome into the family. Baby Logan David Meglin, weighing nine pounds, three ounces, <laughs> 22 inches. <laughs> We're happy about that. Thank you. Chief. Thanks, Dr. President. Uh, just got word from Destin, struck, struck by a motor vehicle in Boston County. Um, what I have tonight are the stats from 2019, as promised from last month. Uh, in the year of 2019, we responded to 3,284 calls. We made 243 arrests and filed over 400 criminal charges. Out of those 243 arrests, 119 were drug-related, 73 were DUIs, and seven of those were retail thefts. Uh, what we, the important thing about the retail thefts is that we did not have a loss prevention officer in Rite Aid until, I believe, December. So in about one month's time, we made seven retail theft arrests once he returned. Um, we had 10 drug overdoses. Five of those individuals were saved with Narcan. And we had a total of 416 
traffic citation issues. 108 out of those were for speeding, and 24 of those were for school bus violations. That's all I have. That's enough. Yeah, it's busy. <coughs> Thanks, Chief. Thank you. So, sir. Well, um, thank you. Here's my written report. Um, just a couple of notes. We're working with uh, Kevin's office to uh, try to take care of uh, some urban parcels that have focused on the issue of the traffic accident. And all that's not in the report, we will also be working follow up with them this morning and trying to work with the residential to get the tip of uh, warrant. Um, aside from that, I would request a <laughs> uh, one question on those parcels that we're talking about. How, how much of a delay is that going to impose on the project? I don't think that it should have been posted in the delay. I've been talking with Dawn, and he, they still have the thing of engineering. Um, this, is, this goes to title certification. I guess there's additional stuff they need to complete on. I'll know within, I, I hope to know it by early next week or next week to, to see what it's going to be at the end of the Okay, thank you. There's a number of other uh, actual workings and non workings around the, the same time. So there's one other one not in the project area itself, or it doesn't add to it, though, and we try to get that one by the same mechanism. And there's a couple other parcels around the Lane School or Police Station and some of those things. This stuff just pops off, you know. Well, it, it's almost like uh, uh, surveying. If, if you took all the ancient survey or surveys and put them together, the, the ball would be quite right. And I, I don't know how it happens, but in the universe of all the properties, you put all the properties together in a map of the county. There's a big survey. And there's pieces that. It's like, and if you went way back when, somebody may have run, somebody may have not. Will there be a true, actual map of uh, what happens if you step into it? But I think this process of establishing the numbers for it and moving on. All right, next on. Uh, borough engineer, Kevin Smith. Oh, yes, we did uh, submit a report dated February 6th. Um, a couple quick updates, and then if uh, the board's pleasure, I would like to do your MS4 training. That might take about five minutes, and I'll get the punchline on why to do that. Um, the team will be aware of the actual curriculum. Um, 2020 road program, we do anticipate opening bids on April 8th. I'll be sending out the list as well as uh, we are going to do a quick road review of uh, all the roads in the borough and come up with that list so we can get a good long-term plan. 2019 roads, uh, we'll, we'll get a schedule from them probably in March and I would say mid-April. Uh, I think they might be finished by May. Um, the project we were just talking about, we did resubmit on the track track and to build the DVD uh, about a week and a half ago. Um, we do expect comments back. This is the first technical review that they had uh, given uh, prior engineer comments on. We did go meet with DVD, did work out the majority of the items, but since this is the first time they've seen some of these calculations, um, I do expect to get one more round of comments and then um, we can determine it. Um, we have addressed everything. A few of the areas, especially with the trash rack, they're not a gigantic fan of these. Um, you'll have some comments on the maintenance of them, um, how you're getting in and out, and what that means. Um, so I think we'll hear back from them in 45 days. Um, we did talk to the county and see if we could split up the projects. They would like grants for those. They said uh, they don't want us to. They want us to do the projects all as, as one, both the field work, the trash rack, and James Street. We didn't get as much. Funding as you would ask for. So the culvert cleaning, I believe you're talking about the one that's in house. Right. 
So you can move forward with that with that permit to be issued um, so as soon as the weather permits. Mm -hmm. And Bill Bodden could um, be handling the machine mm -hmm. is off right now. But mm -hmm. that would probably work for when he gets back. Gets back. Right. Perfect. Um, so those permits are in play. Um, and so you're anticipating the one for the trash rack, 45 days, it takes you to March. Yeah, I would say by June, we'll be there. Okay. We'll have a permit. They know this is critical that you want to get the project built um, and get that process moving. Um, and I would say it's going to take them this permit cycle, and then we'll get some comments, we'll address those, and then we'll get the permit. So the reason for all the delays again was the ballots, the recalculation part. Well, the initial permit that was submitted um, was a small project permit. Only had a piece of what Chapter 105 required. Um, the comments uh, that we had gotten back in December, roughly, were very clear to us that they were not going to accept that. Um, that they wanted the full blown permit submitted. So we went out and met with them, and that's what they wanted. And we um, we then fill out the rest of that stuff. We would all What was the point of us doing the smaller version? Uh, I believe they had an initial meeting with the department and some of the folks at the department uh, kind of led them to believe that that was going to be legal. But when you look at the regs straight up from what they are, it's very unusual that they would let you do just a piece of it. You have to do the whole thing. So it's, that's been our experience. Even on something as simple in a stream as if we did a uh, stream crossing um, with stepping stones, they made us do the full blown permit for that and not just the partial. It, even though it's a very minor impact to the stream. Um, so we looked at what all you were doing and uh, what the calculations were showing. Um, we were pretty comfortable we're going to have to do the full It's just frustrating. We sat at a long table there 18 months ago, if not longer, and they knew everything we met with at the time. And they knew exactly what we were doing yeah. and we gave advice at that time. And I think the difference is. Said, you know, it's the county versus uh, the DEP when you get into these joint permits. And I think the county all along has, has really cooperated in this matter. But the department has a very narrow view of the regulations. And uh, they worked with the same as well. Like I said, yeah, even down to just stepping stones, it was two by two. We had to do a full, full joint permit on that um, and a couple other municipalities. So whenever you're thinking about putting a, a rate basically up in the air, in addition to the end, we're really worried that it would, things would get cleaned in it and the water would get to flow over. So our design is a little different than that. We have to get the more bang so that the water can still flow over, but the trash will get, get grabbed. Oh, so, the field. Yeah. yeah. So we changed that. Um, uh, and actually, we get into the, the one of the DP's comments was do you impact some of these other parcels? And the answer was yes. And then the way the model runs, um, there are these couple parcels that are going on, and you need to resolve that or else they can't issue the permit. So uh, the two things will run simultaneous. Um, we need to get the DEP off and so we'll um, get up the pressures um, to make sure that you know, we have a good exchange of information. If they need something else, uh, I'm sure they'll come to us. So we put it out the day in June. What is that, a 30 day turnaround? Yeah, it's, it's GED out predicted through the first couple of training sessions on these. Um, this funding you have to have um, a board notice for minority participation. Um, that has to happen before you do your ad and things. It's based state in wages, which means the county has to supply, apply for those. Um, so that process, on my end, once I do the DEP, is uh, let me issue the permit. It's about a 60 day process, but we'll start that as soon as we hear that they're going to issue the permit because there's some paperwork that just got sent out to a lot of people. Notice of this project, and then if the, uh, we would get the raise rates, uh, we have a certification that the uh, minorities have been um, notified, and then the minority fund, and then it will be reimbursed if we get it. If we get out too early, um, they won't uh, provide the funding. So it's going to be part of the process. So you have to, they're very strict about their uh, rules, and they'll have a special kickoff meeting on this, and we'll go down. And since we had one on these couple other ones, we did ask for just a little bit, but you know, they don't want to see that. They can retain this one fund, and they don't want to uh, separate it from the other one. So I'm sorry, one last question. So 
So when we're doing that whole process, that takes you in the login, and that's when, and I always forget the what letters, T E. What's the Thank you. T E D F. That's when they announce in August around when there's possible additional funding that needs to put towards it. Yeah. Yeah, there's, um, you actually apply for additional funding too through the uh, CFA. You have some uh, H2O and CFA funding. Uh, we actually don't work as we um, live print roughly is when they're going to make their decision on that funding. So if you've got additional funding, some of these other projects um, could be on that. We can also apply again for those Yes. Yeah. If they want awarded. They were more successful with those. But we're going to move forward with Maple Street, right? Because that's a minimum cost. That's a small cost that they can As we mentioned on in our meeting with, uh, with your staff, is this what incorporated the lowering? trying to do is you explain to us that you uncover all these situations so they don't come back to us. Right. You won't mention some other thing with the property owners and yeah. uh, we have to protect them in some way and I try right. to come from you, not from me. Uh, <laughs> I think we will get involved. Once the EP does weigh in on this final, that they're going to get this permit, we have a model built with all these different improvements right now um, that we walk through we have a permit in. And we're going to have suggestions on the next steps, um, whether it be um, on Baldwin Street, whether it be a, a new conveyance, um, whether it be take out the bridge, just put a different bridge in. Um, all those things we have different ideas in the model. Um, we're also looking at the wall, the road this way, um, which at this point is going to go from the adjacent bridge all the way down and connect into the old railroad crescent. And that will include some flood bumps um, in this area. That does increase the point of water in the stream, but not um, where it comes out of bank. Um, so we're working through that model now. We've picked up a little bit more surveys. Um, that would be one that you're going to apply for. Once you have the study done, you can apply for federal funding to build that. It's, it's considered a lever at that point. Um, so it would be multiple stage, but you'd be able to apply for funding today you can't apply for it because it hasn't been studied. Um, the same way with the stuff on Ball Street, once we get that model put the other stuff in, um, you can apply for other funding sources would be to say you can apply for it because it's not like section hadn't been uh, modeled as new as recently. So um, it'll be a process this year, but by the end of the year, none of us exclusions are most important. We may take time like we talked before, but over time you know, we'll be able to really um, solve this this issue for the downtown area. And it's going to be a multiple solution. I'm positive this area down here section. Um, we have a court office actually. They have the lower section of town that was flooded. They have screw pumps they buy and they pump over into the tile because the <coughs> is and, uh, it is very simple technology and it works incredibly well. There's a lot of water filters um, which you need in, in a flood situation. So um, <coughs> so we will we will get there on some of these issues. So but correct me if I'm wrong that turn Making that instead of a 90 degree turn, we're not making an office yet. That's going to help. Yeah, it, three structures in that. So none of them are very hydraulic. Um, the first one is you have, of course, the bridge, the old county bridge, and there's repair to metal, um, everything's frogs in it. We need to do this one structure, not the other. Um, that's a big number. That's an SDC item. I want to, you know, we're working with the county to push to get that 
change out. <coughs> the next one is the railroad bridge um, that across the Whitney's fix um, long term, and then the two culverts at the end of the fix. Um, if those are back in water upstream, um, down below, you've got this side of town by a levee and pump truck. Um, those are two different problems, two different funds actually. Um, we're going to be able to work through that. Um, we're also taking a look at meetings again to talk about the um, your long-term plan uh, for the different corridors your business district along you know, Baldwin you know, certain homes and stuff do you have a grant in for to take down the businesses that were damaged in the floods we have all those on a map now with the GIS map as we go through this modeling we're trying to incorporate your vision for um, what the overlay of the community is supposed to be from a parking uh, landscaping business See how that meshes in, so we can give you some uh, suggestions there as far as flooding versus um, parking, things like that. So it, we piece that together as we go. But there's no sense doing any of that right now, knowing where we're at until we know these pieces and approve this first piece. The other pieces we've got to prove now, and then we'll fill in the blanks of the future. Um, last item is. is um, are we going to see an audit and when do you think we'll see it um, we actually got our first calls two weeks ago for the second permit cycle which is the permit cycle you're in now DEP have started their audits and they are coming out of the communities they are a little bit more stringent than the last round the last round was very educational and helpful to the communities this round they're being a little more stringent on the checklist if somebody did have a violation I think they would be back from what we understand do a re-inspection within 30 days. If you didn't correct you, whatever your violation was, then you would actually get penalty. Uh, the next cycle, the uh, representative that was doing the first couple, we asked him if that's happened. He's indicated yes. He's had inspections in his communities that weren't complying um, with their permit, and they keep headed back if he thinks that they haven't been with these penalties issued. He himself has written some penalties and notice of violations. So <coughs> different than last time, whenever I could tell the communities that violations this time we want to make sure um, everything's the way it should be um, and your record keeping and so forth um, matches with what's required um, so we will come out and do a mock audit over the next month uh, meet with your staff and then we'll run through the checklist that he has and make sure that everybody's got all the paperwork in order and then we'll go take a quick look at your facilities again suggest anything that we can see to say hey take care of this take care of that um, uh, the agenda for tonight is just permit overview, the timeline, uh, annual WEMIS forecast, uh, which we're stormwater management program, pollution control measures, your pollution reduction plans, um, and your compliance, your annual report, what your current permit cycle is, which is 2018. If you remember, we did submit a grant for a special sweeper um, last year because one of your requirements is in your pollution reduction plan. Over this year, we are going to take a look at your plan because that's very onerous, long term for the uh, municipality um, to have to do the amount of street sweeping and the amount of trashing of that. Uh, we're going to see if we can get some DMPs that are the rain gardens, things like that, that we can build and cut down the amount of maintenance because these street sweepers are three, four hundred thousand dollars, and you're going to get a free one every ten years because of the nature and the amount of street sweeping. It's a significant amount in comparison. It's not that you don't want to uh, the clean municipality, clean streets. It's just their requirement to meet that long term. It's 
it's just a tremendous amount of wear and tear on a piece of equipment uh, that it may be hard long term to keep up with. So we're going to look for some other options for you there as well. Um, the um, permanent overview, um, MS4, uh, it's been this for separate storm source system. MS4 is the uh, uh, term everybody uses. Uh, it applies to all your uh, separate stormwater systems which you have. It's to collect and convey stormwater uh, owned, in, owned by the municipality. Uh, you have your own permit uh, here in, in the borough. And PADP issues the permit. Um, the goal um, under the permit, everybody says, what's it for? Uh, it's for water quality. Uh, one of the main things you see uh, here as a problem is you got so much sediment in the stream. The idea behind this permit is to limit the amount of sediment that is in those streams so that uh, you have the capacity in the stream that you're supposed to. So you actually see the remnants of upstream communities that have a tremendous amount of erosion that ends up dropping out uh, in the streams throughout the borough. Uh, timeline. Everybody says, when did this all start? Why do I have to do it? Uh, it started in 1972. Um, it was under President Nixon, if I remember right, and it was because of Hurricane Agnes. Hurricane Agnes came through, they immediately passed the uh, Clean Water Act, and it had the MPDS regulations. As we see it today, they were framed out in the original document. 1990, uh, phase one was passed, um, which was uh, communities 250,000 and more, um, or population greater of 100,000 for MS4s. There was only two cities in Pennsylvania at that time that had a permit. 2003, phase two came out, um, and that's when all the communities locally got in. If you have an urbanized area, which you're in, and everybody got put in the MS4 program in 2003. <coughs> it was administratively extended through 2013. It's supposed to be a five-year permit. It went for almost nine years. Uh, then 2013, new instructions come out. 2018, the third permit cycle came out. And as part of the third permit cycle, you have to do a pollution reduction plan. Your pollution reduction plan was catch basin cleaning and street sweeping. Catch basin cleaning and wet. <coughs> um, it sounds like an easy uh, item, but if you say you're going to take out three tons of debris a year um, in order to qualify for catch basin cleaning, you have to wet. Um, we don't like that as, as an item for the communities. We want you to clean your catch basin, <coughs> but on its face, um, if you have to weigh it and you can't possibly get to that tonnage, um, then it's a negative for you Rain gardens and things like that are prescriptive. If you design it for the criteria, you build it to the size it's supposed to be built, and you maintain it, you don't ever have to do anything additional to meeting this permit requirement. Currently, this five-year permit, you have to sweep so much and take out so much debris out of the catch basin. Long-term, you can never meet that requirement, I don't believe. So, um, like I said, we are going to work to change that so we have some things. And in our aesthetic, a lot of park, a lot of areas that we can hopefully put things in. You have things in the borough over here that it'll make sense to build so you don't have to keep doing that requirement. Um, 2023, that's when the permit expires. You have to meet your requirements within the permit for your pollution reduction plan. The big question we get is, is this going to continue? The answer is yes. Um, the state of Maryland for 25 or 30 years. Um, they've been doing this. I expect this to be a program, every year they're going to have at least a 10% reduction in um, sediment, um, which again, uh, you're one of the communities uh, that I know you need that reduction from your communities upstream because you want less debris in your streams. Um, so it's a good thing to do long term. Um, another question I get asked a lot, does this actually work? The answer is, yeah, one of the few regulations I see is going to have a big impact <coughs> on uh, how clean the streams are and why. Because long term it's going to address significant amount of flooding uh, in the area. Um, on page three, um, we list out what the MCMs are. This was part of the initial program in um, 2003. Uh, we have a written plan, and there's six minimum control measures in it. We will meet with your staff and go through those items. If you have any questions on those, please feel free to email me. Uh, each one of those I can talk for 10 minutes. <laughs> Next is... Uh, Page four, um, just through what MCM number one and two. Um, they do look at this. Um, you guys have been 
very good about it. Mine's part of this. Um, you have to have public education. Um, you have to have public involvement. Um, that's part of your planning commission. That's part of your different boards where you can't have articles about in the store and stormwater. Um, so if you have a newsletter, if you have something in the community, um, Rotary Club, club meetings, whatever, we recommend all those things that you try to have something. We have a public statement about stormwater. Um, we can help you with that. Um, we put together articles all the time. So if you have a newsletter going out and you don't have an idea of what you want to put in it, um, please call Sean and he'll, he'll fix you up on what to put in. MCM number three is all your uh, alcohols have to be tested once every five years, 20% um, uh, per year. Um, and check it for is there anything that's illicit in it, um, which can be uh, somebody dumps something, um, it could be sewage. Uh, any, they have about 15 different parameters we check. Um, and, and, and that is done over the summer months, uh, 48 hours after a rainy event. Uh, construction sites, stormwater runoff, uh, you have to um, item five is uh, post-construction uh, stormwater runoff. Again, you have ordinances in place to uh, implement those. The last item is uh, MCM six pollution prevention with housekeeping. Um, that's everything that the Federal Public Works does. You have to have a written plan on how they do go about their business, how they clean things, where they dispose things. Do they have their oil kept in the right type of containers, things like that? We will take a look at that if your written plan is up to date on that. Um, when Sean comes out and does the audit, we can get it take that plan for the play. Um, we have a standard that we use for the communities. I don't know if you have fuel. Do you use oil gas or something? Yeah. Good. Because that's <coughs> a minimum requirement when you have to do that. Next is uh, pollution control measures. As part of the uh, current permit cycle, um, there are different things that had to be identified last year and then this year. Um, and they have you check for metals, pathogens, and organic uh, PCBs. Um, the uh, Ohio River uh, has a PCB um, limit on it, what they're doing is having all the communities look and see, did you have an industrial facility within your community that could have uh, had these agents in it? If you did, we'll get it onto a map and then the next permit cycle, they're going to have uh, people that have a, a known existence of it, then you'll have to have a plan to address that. Majority of the communities do not have that. Next is on page six, the PRP plan. We already talked about that with yours is. Um, the VMPs and annual reporting. Uh, one of the things and we'll work with Lori uh, on this is uh, the department wants to make sure that the programs are being uh, budgeted for and programmed. Uh, one thing they don't want to see is if you're supposed to be uh, allocating human work to equal 100000 or $200,000 a year, that you get to year four and you haven't spent anything on MS4s and you haven't done any projects. Um, if they see that, they're going to kick the communities into an individual permit, which means you'll have more requirements. So I think that's why they're coming out in year two starting the audits, so they can see if the communities are doing what they're supposed to do. Um, your annual report last year was fine. We sent it in. Um, this year, you'll have more things that you've accomplished. All those things will be listed, and uh, you know, we'll make sure we work with you to get uh, maintained permit compliance in that case. Um, we do have some communities that are having difficulty funding these um, uh, programs, so um, they can't do it through taxes, so they implement the stormwater fees. The borrowers right now cannot, um, but I do expect over the next uh, six to eight months um, the legislation sitting there. Townships can do that second class. The majority of ours have already passed that. Because there, there are amounts of their programs that they're doing. So um, they can not fund them out of taxes. So they have all passed on for the most part. Next is um, on page seven. Uh, annual reports, I talked about that. They're now due September 30th. They did change to there's now a $500 fee every year. That used to be $500 every five years. Now it's 500 Hitting again on the inspections, there's two types. There's DEP. Um, DEP is required under the permit to come out once every five years and follow up as necessary. Um, EPA has not been uh, in the western half very much. They've been in the eastern half a lot. They've been a lot of fun in the eastern half. So right now, the department um, has not had EPA come in on any communities that we're aware of. Thank you. 
Two members that are two thirds of the way complete with their essentials of firefighting certification program. They should wrap up and test in May. And uh, we did receive a new member that bought a home on Bank Street. Uh, he joined our company uh, last Thursday. He's got 11 years in the fire service. He's fully certified. And the fact that he bought a home, I think, it's safe to, to assume that he's going to be with us for a while. Um, our new fire gear uh, was ordered. Is Actually, I just found out on Saturday, it's going to be here in the next two weeks. And all of our air packs are, we're, we're beginning the training on all of our new air packs, and they will go into service on May 1st. That is all. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. South Ridge EMS, you can come back. That I think are Visual Historical Society, Mary Wise. I'll try not to be too long. I'll try to keep it short. And I wish my glass would be oh, oh, what's the sense now? <laughs> <laughs> First of all, this Sunday coming up is the 23rd of February, and we are having a speaker down at the fire hall. And thanks to the fire company for helping all the time for us. Great. Um, very great. Uh, Dr. Aubrey, a retired Methodist minister who loves history, and all you women and all you teen, well, there aren't any teenage girls here tonight, but you all should come down to hear this. Uh, it is his talk about Barbara Bush being a matriarch. You rarely hear that anymore, anywhere in politics, but he wants to give that history to us, and he is very worthwhile, so is the topic. So it's Sunday at 1.30, he'll begin to talk quarter to two, you should be out of there by three o'clock, and learn quite a bit. We hope to see you there. We still have a few Penguin game tickets, um, we have about 20, 21 of them. Uh, the drawing will be this Friday, the state lottery number, the three digit number. So hopefully someone will, around here, will have purchased that winning ticket. Also, we still have calendars, which are strictly historic. It's very, very great history books for $10 a year. Um, to give you an example of what we do get into, and the mayor knows she comes in every once in a while to help us, and it's great to have her help. Um, we got a phone call Friday from a lady in Celianople. Her mother is deceased, her father is deceased. She has all these papers, the death notices, birth notes, all that. And so she's mailing us a box of them. And we do have about seven drawers right now strictly family histories in virtual area, virtual area. Um, one of the very, very interesting things to me was what came email on Friday from Essen, Germany, West Germany, asking about our, uh, well, we know there are two of them in Collier, and there's one over right as you get on to the Beaver Road, on the Fire Hill Road. And uh, they're Essen, E-S-S-E-N, uh, actual, um, what's the word of mine? Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, since my grandfather and my father, they were all on one side for uh, farm, not farmers, Fire Hill, no, come on, workers. Miners. Right, cool. Okay. Anyway, that's what he wrote us about, and we're going to be getting back to him tomorrow. Uh, we want him to bring those people over if they're sincerely interested and give them tours of what we do have. Um, I think 
I have held up giving you this information, and it's time to do so. We have in this area 15 businesses. The first one was established about 1885. We only took this as far as 1950. We have 15 companies, businesses. Two are from South Bad, one from Kerwin Heights called two from Collier, sorry. The rest are here in Bridgeville, still running, working, and still under family management. It's almost unheard of. We have met with the Chamber of Commerce. We have met with uh, the uh, Rotary Club. And we'll be happy to meet with the rest of you. We have been working with Lori. She knows. And uh, I appreciate that. Uh, it's going to be a across from Sarasniks on that wire that those 15 names are going to be on there. And it's from the Bridgeville Area Historical Society. So watch for that. Probably about March 2nd, they'll go up. And, uh, so learn history. We've already had two companies come to us and ask us to do the next 60 years. So, Mary, um, what's going up on that? History. Wait. What's going up on that? Thing? Sir? Is the banner or plaques or? Uh, they will be the vinyl. Um, a posters, a bigger okay. than a poster. The okay. advertising company around here is doing them for us. Okay. And so now, if we've missed anyone, please see us because we'll put you in the 2021 uh, when it comes out. Um, so I want all of you to think about how great it is to have a small town down in the valley. And we had 15 already. I think it's fantastic history. Oh, let's see, one or two other things. And my glasses are not good tonight. Um, one other thing. I never knew that Martha Washington made and sold women's shoes. So come on over to Marco and take a look for yourself. It's sitting there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Sitting there. And big print, Mrs. Washington, boy, she made shoes and she sold them. So we're finding out a little bit about that company is now up in Oregon. When this uh, piece was made, it was made in Springfield, Ohio. We get very interesting things. And we have the mini museum, and you have to come in and see it. And we have about five times as much stuff in storage as we have on display. Please come see us. Thanks, Mary. Don't find you probably about two miles to go in the store anymore. Oh, never mind. Thanks. 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 Um, Bridgeville Library representative, Ray, you have something? Yeah. 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 Planning Commission? Yeah, real quick. Um, uh, we didn't elect officers because uh, Dale and Larry were at the meeting, so we got it off a month. Um, Tim ran the meeting, went over some stuff, uh, but the main takeaway of the meeting was he's tasking planning to all the members to do like a wish list of 10 items that we really want to kind of see are uh, done in Bridgeville and kind of narrow it down to maybe, you know, based on everybody's looking at maybe three. So at the end of the year, when you guys are doing your budget, we can sit there planning commission to go to conference and say, look, these are what, these are the projects we want you guys to look at. Some might be short term, some might be long term, like over a couple of years. Yeah, I had the chance of uh, coming to that meeting. I, you know, what struck me is looking at attainable projects yes. versus something that is just completely out of reach. So right. that's a good sign. Tim did a nice job. He did. He did. Uh, for our manager, Lori Collins. I provided my original report and the 2020 project update. 
Um, we're going to be updating that monthly uh, to try to see projects that are not on there already uh, to keep you advised in, uh, in real time. Um, so if anyone has any questions, comments, um, you, can, you can contact me regarding anything that I listed there. Other than that, I just want to uh, publicly say that we went to a, uh, a meeting seminar um, sponsored by Brentwood Bank to get with the regional um, health center regarding the census reporting and how important that is for a community to actually reply. Um, there, if there's funding available, and if you have residents in the community that are hesitant to reply, then the funding that's out there, federal, federal funding, it is cut back. So our goal is um, to educate our residents um, in the next couple months um, so that they actually reply, reply to the census. Um, we sent out a census fact sheet with the garbage bills um, a couple weeks ago. We're going to try to hold um, uh, some education um, sometime in March. Um, we're going to um, advertise for residents that aren't sure about um, replying to the census. Um, they can come down to the building because they want you to do it online now and we'll assist them in replying. Um, we're going to let um, managers know such as Bridgeville Towers, Goodwill Manor, those areas, um, and the, those um, leaders in there a bit um, as to how to educate their residents or to help them reply just so that um, we can get the most for our community. Um, uh, we lost probably 300 resident count between the, the census from 10 years ago and the census prior to that. We, it was like 5248, 5230, and I think it's 5148 now. So maybe not that many, but yeah. But, but how much does it cost per household this month? If you, if, if a family of five it is not, does not reply to the census over a 10 year period, um, you lose $100,000 in funding. So it's substantial. And one of the things we want to try to educate are the renters um, who, who may not realize the importance of their reply. So um, that's going to be our goal this year. So if, uh, we would like to talk to the library also um, about sending individuals over there also that may need some help and letting your staff know you know, what they can do to help them. Anything that we can do to make sure everyone that we can get replies. So. Yeah, right. For example, and I know that at least one of the employees helps on the computers, especially for the seniors. If that individual could oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. help that one, because I know that those are huge funds. I mean, and that would be, I'm sure, if you had somebody or one of the stations to be able to support that. Including the library, correct, Lori? Correct. Got any funding for that? So it almost, we should try and promote this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. I appreciate that document. That's fantastic. Um, depending on our old business. New business. Um, we are going to do an executive session. Should we, can we adjourn first? And then can we show up and take a <laughs> some turn as my first? Seconded by Nito. All in favor? Aye. Opposed?